give us beanie kittens. We just love them because they're so cute and cuddly. And you can squish them and toss them and stack them up and dress them up. And <clears throat> Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 90s things we used to do as kids. I was hooked on the videotape. And the third movie I got, which I watched and I just kept paying the late fee, was Scarface. For this list, we're looking at a time when kids were sitting too close to the television and decorating their ceilings with glow-in-the-dark stars. It was the 90s, and it was all that and a bag of chips. In the 1990s, we used to love to tell people to talk to the hand. But today, we want you to talk to us by leaving us a comment about your favorite 90s childhood nostalgia. Number 10. Watched TGIF For grown-ups, TGIF has always been Thank God It's Friday. But for kids in the 90s, we had our own TGIF with the Thank Goodness It's Funny television lineup on Friday nights on ABC. We've got giggles galore, we've got gags, and much more. We've got a lineup of shows that you just can't ignore. Depending on when in the 90s you were watching, the 8 to 10 p.m. lineup would have included one or more of the following shows. Full House, Perfect Strangers, Family Matters, and Boy Meets World, just to name a few. This is the greatest day of our lives. Yes! <laughs> it was a family-friendly block of television that many of us watched every week. And if we couldn't watch, we would get our parents to set the timer on our VCR to record it. Gotta do. <laughs> Number 9. Record Songs Off the Radio Okay, so there's a lot to unpack with this one. Starting with the fact that we all listened to the radio. Who listens to the radio anymore? No, not satellite station for every artist radio. This was regular listen and hope they play a song you like radio. Then there was the device we listened to the radio on, which also had a cassette tape player. I see a little silhouette of a man. He's got a moose, got a moose, will you do the fandango? Thunderbolts and lightning, very, very frightening me. What's a cassette tape? Well, that's a whole other discussion. But needless to say, we would keep a blank tape in the player ready to go. And when we heard a song we liked, we would quickly hit the play and record buttons on the cassette player, which would record what was playing on the radio onto the tape. Isn't technology wonderful? Mr. John, I'm your biggest fan. I've tape recorded all your songs off the radio. Oh, that's very sweet. Have a Grammy. Number eight. Wanted or had a Tickle Me Elmo. When your child tickles him, he talks, <laughs> laughs, and his whole body shakes. Oh, wow. If you were a child of a certain age in 1996, there was one thing you wanted. Well, there were probably a whole lot of things you wanted, but one of them was most likely a Tickle Me Elmo doll. The doll was released earlier in the year, and by Christmas time, had become the hottest toy on the shelves. Assuming you could even find one on the shelves. No wonder he's laughing. All the way to the bank. Because North America has been gripped by Tickle Me Elmo hysteria. Oh boy, that tickles. It was a real life jingle all the way situation. Scalpers were reselling the doll for upwards of $1,500. And there were even reports of physical altercations at stores. Black Friday, but with dolls instead of discounted TVs. Number seven, drink Orbit soda. You know what's missing from today's non-carbonated fruit-flavored beverages? Little floating balls of gelatin. Sweet Jesus. At least that's what the good folks at the Clearly Food and Beverage Company of Canada thought back in 1997 when they introduced their Orbit drink to the world. Looking like a drinkable lava lamp, Few parents could pass by the drink fridge in a store with Orbit's bottles on display and not hear a, can we get that, from their offspring. There was something about these things, they just look like a lava lamp and so futuristic. Something that, like, I don't know, they would drink in Star Trek or something. But obviously enough parents were saying no, or maybe they just didn't taste very good, because low sales numbers led to the product being pulled from store shelves in 1998. Uh, they only had, I think, a six month lifespan before they were taken off the shelves. And uh, I could see why. Number six, try to see those magic eye pictures. Wow, it's a schooner. <laughs> You dumb bastard. It's not a schooner, it's a sailboat. A schooner is a sailboat, stupid head. Do you remember those magic eye illusions? If you were around in the 1990s, you probably do. There were posters and books filled with page after page of magic eye pictures. 
and no shortage of advice on how to see the 3D images hidden within. Because we all had that person we knew who could see every image inside the illusion, while the rest of us would just stand there forever going cross-eyed but never seeing anything except wiggly lines. Oh yeah, look, it's a sailboat. You saw it too, damn it! What? I've been staring at this thing for a week now, from opening till closing, and I can't see a goddamn thing! These things were so popular, as well as frustrating, that one of the most iconic television shows of the decade, Seinfeld, made the posters a central part of one episode. Yeah! <laughs> I don't see it. Yeah, it's a spaceship surrounded by planets, asteroids. I still don't see it. Number 5. Watched Saturday Morning Cartoons. days when kids wake up on Saturday morning, they might watch something on Netflix or Disney Plus. Or maybe they'll scroll through YouTube videos on their parents' tablet or turn on their gaming system and play video games until their parents wake up. But in the 90s, we didn't have a thousand channels and a hundred streaming services. In the 90s, the big four networks, NBC, ABC, CBS, and Fox, still ruled the television landscape. And they still aired cartoons on Saturday mornings. Oh, Peter. Oh, mentor. Oh, great, unaffordable one. Eh, you can call me Bugs. From Tiny Toons to Darkwing Duck, we would eat our cereal, sit too close to the television, and be oh so happy. Darkwing Duck! Let's get dangerous. Number four. Raised a Tamagotchi. Hatch a Tamagotchi, the one and only from Bandai, each sold separately. Today, we all have smartphones in our pockets, but back in the late 90s, many of us were carrying around Tamagotchis. Our parents might have said no when we begged them to get us a dog or a pony, but millions of them said yes to our request for these digital pets. Released in Japan in 1996, these pocket pets made their way to North America the following year. The special thing about them was that they went through several life cycles assuming their owner looked after them properly. I have plenty of experience in biology. I bought a Tamagotchi in 1998, and it's still alive. Let's do this. They soon became one of the standout toy sensations at the end of the 20th century, and the beginning of the 2000s. Oh, are you hungry? Oh, no, 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 no. By all means, feed it. Play till your heart's content. Number three, waited for the internet to connect. Allison, can you explain what internet is? They say patience is a virtue. If that's true, then kids of the 90s might have been some of the most virtuous children ever. At least if compared to the high-speed internet spoiled youth of today. Sure, we didn't have to walk 20 miles to school uphill through 5 feet of snow, but we did have to wait for our internet to connect if we wanted to search the World Wide Web or chat with our AOL friends. Napoleon, don't be jealous that I've been chatting online with babes all day. The beeps and hisses of a dial-up modem connecting is one of the most iconic sounds of the decade and one that brings with it instant feelings of nostalgia and frustration for anyone who lived through those early internet years. Welcome. Number two, playing with or collected Beanie Babies. Collecting beanies is an obsession. <laughs> like you Beanie Moms out there. There are over 185 different types of beanies. Little toy animals stuffed with plastic pellets. That's all they are. And yet we all either had some or knew plenty of other kids that did. And the odds are good you also knew at least a few adults who were obsessed with collecting them as a financial investment for the future. I have um, probably 168 beanies. I still do not have a full set. It's very hard to get a brownie and it's very hard to get a punchers with tags. While that seemed like a good idea at the time, these days most Beanie Babies aren't worth much more than the $5 we originally paid for them. But in the right condition with certain tag errors and such, you can see certain Beanie Babies selling for hundreds, thousands, or even tens of thousands of dollars. Bottom line, your chances of having a rare one are rare. And if you should get lucky, though, on eBay right now, people are wanting as much as $149,000. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Learned music trivia from pop-up videos. VH1's Bubbles of Music Miscellany. I wanna really, really, really wanna zig -a -zig -a. Encarta Encyclopedia. Microsoft gave us an encyclopedia on a CD-ROM. It's one small step for man. You don't understand. Willie was a salesman. Say simply. Danced the Macarena. It was the chicken dance for a new generation. Watched our parents read maps. 
before Google told us how to get everywhere. Are you watching for an address, Clark? Yeah, Dad, what block are we on? Very funny, Russ. Honey, will you check the map again? Hey, could that be it? Polly Pockets. Who doesn't want a dollhouse and dolls to carry in their pocket? Feed the fuzzy bunnies, put them in the hay, take care of the pandas and the kitties all day, Polly Pockets. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Rented Movies at Blockbuster uh, Rent a movie for me when I was a child was an event. It entailed me and my sister and my mom all going together and my mom would pick one and she allowed me and my sister to each pick a video and so it always became like a bit of like a treasure hunt. To those born in the 21st century, there's a chance that nothing about the sentence rented movies at Blockbuster will make sense. But it's true. Back in the 90s, we couldn't scroll through movies on our phone, computer, or television and stream whatever we wanted to watch. We had to physically go to a store like Blockbuster, where they had all the movies. Instead of scroll, we would stroll through aisles of VHS and later DVD boxes. We'd pay for them and take them home for a day or two, until we had to bring them back. Rewound, of course. If you're curious about the experience, there remains one Blockbuster location in the world in Oregon. Believe it or not, back in the day when we rented um, a lot more, there would be many mornings where we would come in and these doors would be open, movies would be out to here, and they'd be all the way filled to the other side. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.